OpenAI's new updates have just changed the way that we need to run our AI agencies forever. In this video, I'll be going over the latest OpenAI updates from their dev day and giving you my honest and real opinion on whether I think that this is the end of AI agencies in general. So look, let's jump straight into what was announced and see what this means for us. Let's watch this together. I'm gonna probably skip through the two of the parts that are more relevant for AI automation agencies and agency owners in general. Today, we've got about 2 million developers. 2 million developers on the platform already. Building on our API for a wide variety of use cases, doing amazing stuff. Over 92% of Fortune 500 companies building on our products. That statistic right there is insane as well. 92% of all the Fortune 500 companies are building on OpenAI's products and developing some form of tool for themselves. Just put that into context and even that as an argument to take forward to our potential clients is insane. That number is ridiculous. 92% of Fortune 500 companies are utilizing AI in some way. And we have about 100 million weekly active users now on ChatGPT. And what's incredible on that is we got there entirely through word of mouth. OpenAI is the most advanced and the most widely used AI platform in the world now. So before I jump into this next part, at our agency, we build a lot of custom solutions. You know, we're building them from scratch using code and then we're linking into GPT using their APIs. So we are essentially just building another interface for GPT, but we're training these bots in a certain way and using essentially uh, the language models of OpenAI to then deliver the service that we're offering to our clients. So what's really good about this is we've had ChatGPT4, but we're now bringing out ChatGPT4 Turbo. And the features of ChatGPT4 Turbo are something that you're gonna see the effects of as you progress a little bit more through your agency, especially if you start working with developers and get more into the custom build side of things. I was gonna say like this could be very beneficial to you if you're building just chatbots for clients, but as we progress through this video, I think you'll start to realize where that's heading. We are launching a new model, GPT-4 Turbo. We've got six major things to talk about for this part. Number one, context length. A lot of people have tasks that require a much longer context length. GPT-4 supported up to 8K, and in some cases up to 32K context length. But we know that isn't enough for many of you and what you want to do. GPT-4 Turbo supports up to 128,000 tokens of context. So we've gone from 8,000 context length to 128,000 tokens of context. This means that we can input more data. It means we can output more data. So instead of being limited by the, the outputs that we essentially give to our clients, well, we can change that completely. So if we're inputting large files, maybe even like a PDF of a book, we can now input that data because there is enough tokens of context to take that information and that knowledge. That's 300 pages of a standard book, 16 times longer than our 8K context. So this is really good because we work with uh, a few clients that import a ton of data. Lots of different books, lots of different PDFs, lots of different file formats to train their custom agent that we built them. And this is perfect because this now ensures that they can add documents with 300 pages, for example. Number two, more control. We've heard loud and clear that developers need more control over the model's responses and outputs. So we've addressed that in a number of ways. We have a new feature called JSON mode, which ensures that the model will respond with valid JSON. This has been a huge developer request. It'll make calling APIs much easier. Number three, better world knowledge. You want these models to be able to access better knowledge about the world, so do we. So we're launching retrieval in the platform. You can bring knowledge from outside documents or databases into whatever you're building. We're also updating the knowledge cutoff. We are just as annoyed as all of you, probably more, that GPT-4's knowledge about the world ended in 2021. We will try to never let it get that out of date again. GPT-4 Turbo has knowledge about the world up to April of 2023, and we will continue to improve that over time. That means that we can now actually rely on ChatGPT rather than just our knowledge base to actually answer questions and support the clients that we work with. For, you know, you couldn't actually just give the reins to ChatGPT because it would just go off on a tangent and probably give the wrong information because it wasn't trained, right? It didn't have that up-to-date information, but now we have that. Number four, new modalities. Surprising no one, Dolly 3, GPT-4 Turbo with Vision, and the new text-to-speech model are all going into the API today. This is also sick. We can now just access DALI and TTS directly through GPT. And with our new text-to-speech model, you'll be able to generate incredibly naturally natural-sounding audio from text in the API with six preset voices to choose from. I'll play an example. Did you know that Alexander Graham Bell, the eminent inventor, was enchanted by the world of sounds? His ingenious mind led to the creation of the graphophone, which etched sounds onto wax, making voices whisper through time. This is much more natural than anything else we've heard out there. Voice can make apps more natural to interact with and more accessible. It also unlocks a lot of use cases like language learning and voice assistance. So for us, we work a lot with B2B companies. We are working with sales teams that aren't very good at sales. At what point do we now have a virtual sales team that is completely run through OpenAI and we plan out the scripts and we use their voice assistant to then go and do these sales calls for us? It's only a matter of time before we build something like that or something just comes to mass market and we can use it. The better that OpenAI gets uh, with their, their voice system, it's just gonna get crazy. Speaking of new modalities, we're also releasing the next version of our open source speech recognition model, Whisper V3 today. 
and it'll be coming soon to the API. It features improved performance across many languages, and we think you're really going to like it. Okay, this is the part where Sam basically comes out with his own AI automation agency and uh, offers his services, so let's hear this. Okay, number five, customization. Fine-tuning has been working really well for GPT 3.5 since we launched it a few months ago. Starting today, we're going to expand that to the 16K version of the model. Also starting today, we're inviting active fine-tuning users to apply for the GPT-4 fine-tuning experimental access program. But you may want a model to learn a completely new knowledge domain or to use a lot of proprietary data. So today we're launching a new program called Custom Models. With Custom Models, our researchers will work closely with a company to help them make a great custom model, especially for them and their use case using our tool. This includes modifying every step of the model training process, doing additional domain-specific pre-training, a custom RL post-training process, tailored for a specific domain, and whatever else. We won't be able to do this with many companies to start, It'll take a lot of work, and in the interest of expectations, at least initially, it won't be cheap. I wonder how much OpenAI charges to build out these solutions for you. It must be ridiculous. But if you're excited to push things as far as they can currently go, please get in touch with us, and we think we can do something pretty great. There you go. You heard it from the man himself. There is uh, still a massive opportunity to build custom solutions and train these agents on something completely unique. So as we progress through this, you're gonna see something else that is gonna change the game for agency owners that are just building chatbots. The value lies in building those custom solutions and really understanding a business and being able to break down that business, be able to structure a solution that's actually built around their needs and their pain points. Long gone, I'm afraid, are the days of you know building a custom chatbot to answer some basic questions because they're gonna be rolling that out very, very soon. Let's keep watching. And then number six, higher rate limits. We're doubling the tokens per minute for all of our established GPT-4 customers so that it's easier to do more. And you'll be able to request changes to further rate limits and quotas directly in your API account settings. In addition to these rate limits, it's important to do everything we can do to make it new successful building on our platform. So we're introducing Copyright Shield. This is big. So this is insanely good because we get asked a lot from our clients. It's like, if you're using AI, doesn't it go out and steal other people's stuff? And we now have the security of saying this is actually covered by Copyright Shield. They have systems in place that basically ensure that one, we're protected and two, it doesn't happen. So this is massive. I really, really like this. Copyright Shield means that we will step in and defend our customers and pay the cost incurred if you face legal claims around copyright infringement. And this applies both to ChatGPT Enterprise and the API. That's nuts. I'm super excited to announce that we worked really hard on this and GPT-4 Turbo, a better model, is considerably cheaper than GPT-4 by a factor of 3x for prompt tokens and 2x for completion tokens starting today. So the new pricing is one cent per thousand prompt tokens and three cents per thousand completion tokens. For most customers, that will lead to a blended rate more than 2.75 times cheaper to use for GPT-4 Turbo. Than G this just means that all of the solutions that you build have now got cheaper to run. So usage costs are down if you've already got clients where they're paying usage. So that is a massive step forward and extremely helpful if you have multiple clients or they are using a lot of tokens with their products. And this is the part where we get destroyed. The upsides of this are going to be tremendous. So today we're taking our first small step that moves us towards this future. Uh, we're thrilled to introduce GPTs. This is where it gets crazy, guys. This is what you need to really understand and start to think creatively of how you can utilize this uh, moving forward with your clients. I don't personally think this is the death of AI automation agencies, far from it. This is just another massive opportunity and another, another part of the road that we now need to navigate down. GPTs are tailored versions of ChatGPT for a specific purpose. You can build. Or other words, they are custom AI agents that anyone can build now inside a GPT. A GPT, a customized version of ChatGPT for almost anything, with instructions, expanded knowledge, and actions, and then you can publish it for others to use. And because they combine instructions, expanded knowledge, and actions, they can be more helpful to you. They can work better in many contexts, and they can give you better control. They'll make it easier for you to accomplish all sorts of tasks or just have more fun, and you'll be able to use them right within ChatGPT. You can, in effect, program a GPT with language just by talking to it. It's easy to customize the behavior so that it fits what you want. This makes building them very accessible and it gives agency to everyone. So we're going to show you what GPTs are, how to use them, how to build them, and then we're going to talk about how they'll be distributed and discovered. And then after that, for developers, we're going to show you how to build these agent-like experiences into your own apps. So first, let's look at a few examples. Our partners at Code.org are working hard to expand computer science in schools. They've got a curriculum that is used by tens of millions of students worldwide. Code.org crafted Lesson Planner GPT to help teachers provide a more engaging experience for middle schoolers. If a teacher asks it to explain for loops in a creative way, it does just that. What's crazy about this, and if you actually picked up on what he said, 
he said that developers will be able to input this into custom apps. So you can build GPTs and then you can move them into your own custom apps and you essentially call the API and you can use the GPTs that are built on OpenAI and then use them on your own custom platforms. Now for me, I think it's terrifying that so many SaaS companies have been set up over the last six months. They've been building towards stuff like this, like a lot of the chatbot builders, for example, and they're now going to basically be competing directly with OpenAI. So we're pretty good. I mean, we're pretty we're, we're sitting comfortably because we can navigate. As agency owners, we have that flexibility to be able to say, we're going to focus on this now and we're going to work with this new tool that's come out and adapt here. But if you have invested into a full SaaS company and you've gone all into this over the last you know six months and you put everything into it, this is terrifying because... Essentially, OpenAI has come out now and they've built a chatbot builder that requires no building. You can, you'll be able to see, you can input text and have a conversation with the chatbot builder and it will build you this chatbot. In this case, it'll do it in terms of a video game character, repeatedly picking up coins. Super easy to understand for an eighth grader. As you can see, this GPT brings together Code.org's extensive curriculum and expertise and lets teachers adapt it to their needs quickly and easily. Next. This one's good. Canva has built a GPT that lets you start designing by describing what you want in natural language. If you say, make a poster. This is another massive fear point for graphic designers. Poster for dev, a dev date reception this afternoon, this evening, and you give it some details. It'll generate a few options to start with by hitting Canvas APIs. Now this concept may be familiar to some of you. We've evolved our plugins to be custom actions for GPTs. You can keep chatting with this to see different iterations. And when you see one you like, you can click through to Canva for the full design experience. So now, We'd like to show you a GPT live. Zapier has built a GPT that, let, that lets you perform actions across 6,000 applications to unlock all kinds of integration possibilities. This basically means that we now have a Zapier AI agent in our pocket that we can tell and ask and request it to go and build us automations for, for specific partners or specific clients we work with. So we now have an automation agent ready to go. It's just there. It can build the automations for us inside of Zapier. So I think that is absolutely insane and a massive opportunity for us because it just makes our life a lot easier. And then going back to what I constantly tell you guys when you say, well, Liam, if this already exists, why don't people just use it themselves? Convenience is king. People don't realize that they can do these things and they will pay you for the convenience of them not having to learn how to do these things. So although there are so many big opportunities that are coming out for businesses in general and just the entire world with open AI, we actually have the big opportunity because we're the ones that understand it the best. We sit there and we come up with creative ways of monetizing it. And then we can ultimately package it up into an offer and then go ahead and sell it to a client that hasn't had the time to go and research this or hasn't had the time to really invest to learn how to make it work for them or they don't have the time to invest to run it and maintain it over a longer period of time. So this is still a massive opportunity for us, but I'll let uh, Sam carry on with this. I'd like to introduce Jessica one of our solutions architects, who is going to drive this demo. Welcome, Jessica. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Imagine if she tripped there. It'd be so awkward. Thank you all for being here. My name is Jessica Shea. I work with partners and customers to bring their product to life. And today, I, I can't wait to show you how hard we've been working on this. So let's get started. So to start, where your GPT will live is on this upper left corner. I'm going to start with clicking on the Zapier AI Actions. And on the right-hand side, you can see that's my calendar for today. So it's quite a day. To start, I can ask, what's on my schedule for today? We build GPTs with security in mind. So before it performs any action or share data, it will ask for your permission. So right here, I'm going to say allowed. So GPT is designed to take in your instructions, make a decision on which capability to call to perform that action, and then execute that for you. So you can see right here, it's already connected to my calendar. It pulls into my, my information. And then I've also prompted it to identify conflicts on my calendar. So you can see right here, it actually was able to identify that. So it looks like I have something coming up. So what if I want to let Sam know that I have to leave early? So right here I say, let Sam know I got to go um, chasing GPUs. So basically what she did, she had a Google Calendar set up and it had a bunch of meetings in place. She literally asked the Zapier uh, GPT if she has any conflicts at a certain time, it came back and said, yes, you do. And then she's now asked it to let Sam know that she's busy and can't make the meeting. Zapier is now gonna go through and actually message Sam. Sam, did you get that? I did. 
again, the complexity of building these long automations and these different workflows for businesses is just gonna get so much easier. We now have an even stronger tool at our fingertips. This is where it gets crazy. This is essentially the chatbot builder that I wanted to show you guys. Um, this is where I think the biggest opportunity will be, as well as potentially the scariest thing for AI automation agencies, because we may have to divert our offer slightly and uh, start reshifting exactly what we're offering. All right, so I want to create a GPT uh, that helps give founders and developers advice when starting new projects. Um, I'm going to go to create a GPT here, and this drops me into the GPT builder. Uh, I worked with founders for years at what? Imagine being a chatbot builder who's like just gone live with their product. You'd be shitting yourself. I see. And still, whenever I meet developers, the questions I get are always about how do I you know, think about a business idea? Can you give me some advice? Uh, I'm going to see if I can build a GPT to help with that. So to start, GPT Builder asks me what I want to make. And I'm going to say I want to help startup founders think through their business ideas and get advice after the founder has gotten some advice that I want here. And it's gonna go off and start thinking about that. And it's gonna write some detailed instructions for the GPT. So he's now building a custom chatbot just based on conversation. He's speaking to the chatbot builder and the chatbot builder is now gonna build based on his prompts. Um, it's also gonna, let's see, ask me about a name. How do I feel about Startup Mentor? That's fine, uh, that's good. So if I didn't like the name, of course I could call it something else, but it's you know, gonna try to have this conversation with me and, and start there. And you can see here on, uh, on, on the right in the preview mode that it's already starting to fill out the GPT. So even the ideation of the name, the logo for the company, all of that stuff that you've been procrastinating on, that now doesn't exist because, well, GPT is essentially stepping in and handling that entire part for you as well. So if we fast forward here, it actually goes ahead, it makes the logo, it makes the name, it writes uh, an updated bio of what the bot actually does, and then we can see. And you see now that the GPT is being built out a little bit more as we go. Now, what I want this to do, um, how it can interact with users, I could talk about style here, but what I'm gonna say uh, is I am going to upload transcripts of some lectures about startups I have given. Please give advice based off of those. All right, so now uh, it's gonna go figure out how to do that. And I would like to show you the configure tab. So you can see some of the things that were built out here as we were going um, by, by the builder itself. And you can see that there's capabilities here that I can enable. Um, I could add custom actions. These are all fine to leave. Um, I'm gonna upload a file. Uh, so just like any other chatbot builder, we have knowledge bases, we can allow web browsing, we can allow DALI image generation inside. That for me is massive. That it makes it so much easier for us to do. We can now essentially go out and we can build a graphic design bot. You know, we can build a Canva bot. We can build all these different bots now. So if we look at the flip side and the opportunity here, we now level up our chatbot capabilities um, and we can do it at a much cheaper rate and we can do it at a faster rate and we can scale this faster. So we have the builder there and it's way easier to use. Uh, so here is a lecture that I picked that I used to, that I gave with some startup advice. Um, and I'm gonna add that here. Look at the document I uploaded. Um, it'll also have, of course, all of the background knowledge of GPT-4. That's pretty good. Those are three things that I definitely have said many times. Um, now, we could go on and it would start following the other instructions and you know, grill me on why I'm not growing faster. But in the interest of time, I'm gonna skip that. Uh, I'm gonna publish this only to me for now. Uh, I can work on it later. I can add more content. I can add a few actions that I think would be useful. Um, and then I can share it publicly. So that's what it looks like to create a GPT. So with GPTs, we're letting people easily share and discover all the fun ways that they use ChatGPT with the world. You can make private GPTs like I just did. Or you can share your creations publicly with a link for anyone to use. Or if you're on ChatGPT Enterprise, you can make GPTs just for your company. There you go. So <laughs> OpenAI now is essentially letting companies just build their own chatbots just by speaking to them. And if we go back to that statistic, which was like 90% or 92% of Fortune 500 companies are using OpenAI um, in some way within their companies. Well, if we look at this, those companies are now gonna be utilizing these chatbots. So the chatbots are gonna be a much more prevalent thing in terms of everyday usage across websites and across different businesses. So for our clients, they're gonna see more chatbots around. They're gonna see that other big companies are using more chatbots. So again, it's great for publicity, if you like, for uh, our types of services, but it does become a lot easier for these uh, businesses to actually make them themselves. Now, for us, it just means that we have to level up our offer. I've spoken about this 
in my last video, you know, how do we develop an offer that is not commoditized? We have a moat around us. We have so much value inside of that offer. That's a no-brainer for them to pick and work with us. Now, for me, if we're just building chatbots and we're just building simple automations, of course, it was only a matter of time before OpenAI come out and absolutely decimate everyone who is just offering those services. But hopefully you've been thinking outside the box and you've been thinking, actually, how can I be a little bit different? How can I ensure that I'm future proofing myself and actually building uh, value inside of my offer so that yes, someone could go out and do this part of my offer, but they can't go and do this part, this part and this part. Or if they did, it would take them a long time. And that is why it makes sense for them to pay our agency to do the work. Okay. So don't worry, don't be stressing out, don't be jumping ship and going to start drop shipping again. That's not the case. There is still so much opportunity here. You just need to be smart with your offer. And later this month, we're going to launch the GPT store. You can list a GPT there and we'll be able to feature the best and the most popular GPTs. Of course, we'll make sure that GPTs in the store follow our policies before they're accessible. Revenue sharing is important to us. We're going to pay people who build the most useful and the most used GPTs a portion of our revenue. So there you go. Maybe you're an open AI SaaS agency now. You just go out and build GPTs and you launch them on the open AI store in the marketplace. Look, I don't think it's going to be very easy to get to number one and start making money on that marketplace. There's way smarter people than, than me that are going to be pumping them out all day long and they'll have huge teams just replicating what's working and they'll be really good and they'll have top developers on it. But if we actually take a step back again and look at it, well, we now have a marketplace of all these top performing GPTs that are essentially chatbot templates and ready to go chatbots that we can roll into clients and we can give out to our clients. We can reskin them. Perhaps we can you know, buy them. I don't know how much it's going to cost, but we can buy them or we can download them and use them. So we actually have these chatbots already built out for us. So instead of us being this custom chatbot builder, we are actually just a consultant and we implement these different solutions for businesses, which is what we've been doing from day one anyway. For a vibrant ecosystem with the GPT store, just from what we've been building ourselves over the weekend, we're confident there's gonna be a lot of great stuff. We're excited to share more information soon. This is exciting for me. There is gonna be some crazy stuff built on this marketplace and um, it's just gonna make our life a lot easier. And it should give you like a huge bank of ideas and different opportunities to take forward to your clients. But this is a developer conference and the coolest thing about this is that we're bringing the same concept to the API. There we go. So we're going to have an API that can call these GPTs. We can use it across Shopify, Discord, Snapchat. I'm sure there'll be other uh, social platforms there as well. So again, another massive opportunity instead of just thinking, how can we build GPTs for this platform? So we can actually say, let's work with e-com stores and build these GPTs for Shopify and build them inside of Discord channels, that kind of thing. Many of you have already been building agent-like experiences on the API. For example, Shopify Sidekick. Notice how he's never said the word chatbot as well. It's always agents. It elevates it so much more. It makes it sound so much cooler and it's way more professional. Like chatbots are fucking basic as. As you take actions on the platform, Discord's Clyde lets Discord moderators create custom custom personalities for, and Snap's My AI, a customized chatbot that can be added to group chats and make recommendations. These experiences are great, but they have been hard to build. Sometimes taking months, teams of dozens of engineers, there's a lot to handle to make this custom assistant experience. So today we're making that a lot easier with our new assistance API. This is nuts. The this is going to be big for us. Assistance API includes persistent threads, so they don't have to figure out how to deal with long conversation history, built-in retrieval, code interpreter, a working Python interpreter in a sandbox environment, and of course, the improved function calling that we talked about earlier. So we'd like to show you a demo of how this works, and here is Roman, our head of developer experience. So this next part he's about to show you is going to be uh, OpenAI's assistance, which is essentially another chatbot builder. Um, so you can actually go and start using this right now with OpenAI. Um, you go on the, uh, the playground and you can actually access this. But let's enhance this app by adding a very simple assistant to it. So this is a dashboard that he's built. This is a platform that he's built um, with assistance on the back end. This is the screen. We're going to come back to it in a second. First, I'm going to switch over to the new assistance playground. Creating an assistant is easy. You just give it a name. So Again, very, very similar to the chatbot builders we have. Name instructions, you know, how do you want to train that model? Uh, what model you're going to use? What functions, code interpreter, retrieval? Initial instructions, a model. In this case, I'll pick GPT-4 Turbo. And here, I'll also go ahead and select some tools. And then you can upload files there as well for a knowledge base. I'll turn on code interpreter and retrieval and save. And that's it. Our assistant is ready to go. Next, I can integrate with two new primitives of this assistance API. 
threads, and messages. Let's take a quick look at the code. The process here is very simple. For each new user, I will create a new thread. I'll not use it yet. Function calling is really powerful. And as Sam mentioned, we're taking it a step further today. It now guarantees the JSON output with no added latency. And you can invoke multiple functions at once. We're going to have the assistant respond to that again. And here within. So again, if you was building a uh, recommendation tool for travel agents, then good luck, mate. Interesting is that the assistant knows about functions, including those to annotate the map that you see on the right. And so now all of that this is just dropped the locations of these recommendations on the live map. It's insane. It's are dropping in real time here. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And that integration allows our natural language interface to interact fluidly with components and features of our app. And it truly showcases now the harmony. You so it's cool. He's adding his file here. And what, what's important about this is this is, again, is more on the, the dev API side of things. But it's essentially reading this PDF very, very easily and then translating it using code to basically format it in a way to show on the, uh, the app itself. So you'll see this. Sneak peek uh, at it. Very typical United Flight ticket. And behind the scene here, what's happening is that Retrieval is reading these files, and boom, the information about this PDF appeared on the screen. So here, if I go ahead and click on threads, this is the thread I believe we're currently working on. And see, like these are all the steps, including the functions being called with the right parameters and uh, the PDFs I've just uploaded. But let's move on to a new capability that many of you have been requesting for a while. Code Interpreter is now available today in the API as well. That gives the AI the ability to write and execute code on the fly. But That's insane. It literally means that they can now decide and implement code on the go. Like it doesn't need to be preset. As soon as a file is inputted, it will write the code and execute on the code to be able to read that file, for example. Now, I'm not a developer. I don't have a techie background. But this just means that I don't need one because OpenAI is going to step in and do the heavy lifting for me. So any of you guys that are illiterate with code, just like I am, which is okay in this new world, then uh, this is massive for us. Even generate files. So let's see that in action. If I say here... This also means that we can deliver for our clients way faster. Hey, we'll be four friends staying at this Airbnb. What's my share of it? plus my flights. All right. Now here, what's happening is that code interpreter noticed that it should write some code to answer this query. So now it's computing you know, the number of days in Paris, the number of friends. It's also doing some exchange rate calculation behind the scene to get this answer for us. Not the most complex math, but you get the picture. Mate, accountants are doomed. That is terrifying. It's literally working everything out on the back end, doing the calculation it needs to. It's even smart enough to you know, do the exchange rate and pull that information from the from the internet, I'm assuming. Um, it's just nuts. Like, that is scary if you work in uh, the financial services. This is going to be crazy for trading. There's so many opportunities here. Imagine you're building a very complex, like, finance yeah. app that's crunching countless numbers, plotting charts. So really, any task that you'd normally tackle with code, then Code Interpreter will work great for you. All right, I think my trip to Paris is sorted. While working... On Dev Day, I built a small custom assistant that knows everything about this event. But instead of having a chat interface while running around all day today, I thought, why not use voice instead? So in, let's bring my phone up on screen here so you can see it on the right. Awesome. So on the right, you can see a very simple Swift app that takes microphone input. And on the left, I'm actually going to bring up my terminal log so you can see what's happening behind the scenes. So let's give it a shot. Hey there, I'm on the keynote stage right now. Can you greet our attendees here at Dev Day? Hey everyone, welcome to Dev Day. It's awesome to have you all here. Let's make it an incredible day. Very, very cool. Again, future of uh, sales, sales call centers are, are doomed, mate. But if we're there to uh, capitalize on that and uh, make our own virtual versions, then we're gonna be winning. In the scenes too. So I'm using Whisper to convert the voice input into text, an assistant with GPT-4 Turbo, and finally the new TTS API to make it speak. But thanks to function calling, things get even more interesting when the assistant can connect to the internet and take real actions for users. So let's do something even more exciting here uh, to get. We can basically build our own Alexas. How about this? Hey, assistant, can you randomly select five Dev Day attendees here and give them $500 in OpenAI credits? Yes, checking the list of attendees. 
Done. I picked five dev day attendees and added $500 of API credits to their account. Congrats to Christine M, Jonathan C, Stephen G, Louise K, and Suraj S. Mate, imagine your nan's going to be down the bingo hall and she's going to get a name called out by the bingo game master that's been, uh, you know, working on the OpenAI API and uh, she's just going to get her name called out by this robot and she's going to be like, yes, I've won. Uh, that's how it's going to be. Like, we're going to have so many of these voice agents everywhere, I think, because like you just said, they're trained on, well, they, they have access to the internet. They can go and research. They You can plug knowledge bases into them. There is no need for... Uh, a human a, a receptionist anymore like they're redundant receptionists are notoriously useless let's replace them with something that is good something that doesn't fuck up something that doesn't deviate something that doesn't call in sick something that doesn't ask for a pay rise when they're still shit at what they do like this is the future this is crazy we're super excited that we got to share all of this with you today so look we're covered with copyright we've got new gpt 4.5 turbo we have uh, text to voice, so voice assistants. We have GPTs, the custom building chatbots. We have assistants that can now be built. We have crazy, crazy uh, features when it comes to just code interpretation. We have DALI being accessible now through GPT and through the different API calls. It's also gonna be cheaper for us to run. It's gonna be faster for us to run. And then just like you've just seen with that voice assistant, the opportunities that are there are crazy. So. That's it from OpenAI Dev Day. Lots to break down and lots to look forward to in the future. So look, is this the end of AI automation agencies? Of course it isn't. Obviously it's not. But it does mean that we need to be smarter with the offers that we're putting forward to our clients. And if you're part of the network or you've spoken to me in any way over the last several months, you would have heard this from me already. We need to be elevating ourselves away from just being general bot builders and being these really commoditized agencies that basically open AI are going to eventually destroy it and wipe out. You know, it isn't a case of if it will happen, it is a case of when. We know how fast open AI progresses. We know how quickly the whole AI space is moving. So we would be absolute idiots to sit here and, and say, we're gonna be safe. We'll be able to build chatbots forever. It's not gonna happen. We need to be smart. We need to always be evolving. And that is the beauty of having an agency model. You can constantly adapt and pivot and change your offer based on circumstance and based on the type of clients that you're working with. What you really need to be able to do is actually become an expert on everything open AI. You need to be able to sit back and figure out what their next step is gonna be. And if you can do that, then you are a leveraged voice for your clients. You still then hold the keys to be able to talk about AI and the different opportunities and possibilities that they could be using inside of their business. But like I said, open AI is moving so quickly that you would be an idiot to not think that within six months, we're gonna see another crazy round of updates. So as long as you know that and you keep that in the forefront of your mind, when Ever you're you know, speaking to new clients or making decisions with inside of your agency, then you'll be able to navigate and focus on the right things that, that should future-proof yourself in this space. And if you can do that, then hopefully all of these updates are positive for you and you have enough skills and enough knowledge to make opportunities out of these situations as they arise. So look, until we're all living underground and robots are running the world, let's actually make some money with AI and utilize the opportunities that are in front of us. Guys, if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel. I'm here running my AI automation agency and helping hundreds of other people do the same. So I would love to see you in the free Discord that we have down below as well, which is the network where you can learn about how to build your agency and essentially just get resources and access to experts in their field. If that sounds like something you would benefit from, then you can join using the link down below in the description. But that is it for me today. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.